Hello and welcome. I am continuing my walkthrough of round one or walkthrough slash test solve uh, of round one of the Microsoft Excel Collegiate Challenge 2024 first online round. Uh, so last video I covered the kickoff case. This one I'm going to talk about the meal plan case, which is by Peter Charles, who is one of my one of my definite favorite case authors. So instructions, you were searching through the University of Arizona archives and stumbled across meal plan information for some of the university's most famous alums. Instead of selling this information to the tabloids, you decide to sort, review, and analyze what you found. Good choice. The information you found has been summarized onto two tabs, food prices and food data. The food prices tab contains the cost for 50 food items for each of the university's four districts, historic, global, highland, and north. Okay. Food data tab contains 1,000 food orders. Each order contains the students who ordered, the food they ordered, the district where the order occurred, and the quantity that they ordered. Get to work on your analyses, and hopefully you don't regret your choice not to sell this information to the tabloids. Okay. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Okay, let's dive on it. Given a food, what is the cost for one quantity in the historic district? So that will just be a straight X lookup of this food uh, in this column. Returning from historic. Just check that works, and it does. That's fine. Okay. Given a food and a district, what is the cost for one quantity of that food? So this is a classic two-way lookup. So we're going to index. Uh, the row number is going to be the foods are down the sides. So we're going to x-match that against something. And then the column number, we're going to x-match the x match oh sorry because we're still in x match confusing uh, x match this against okay so we want to x i'm just going to open up i put in the line breaks just because it makes it easier to go and find the right place to add each of these things in so then we're going to match that against there should have really given these names but i haven't uh, it'll make it easier if i do though so let's do it So, NA. It's not good. Uh, oh, yeah, because you're starting in row 34 for some reason. Start in row 3. That looks better. 1378, good. And also, it would be easier to not make these kind of silly mistakes. Uh, so, if I had names, so let's go food, dist, uh, food, PR for food price. And then let's just. Food PR, this is food, and this is dist. It also makes the formula 10 times more readable, frankly. Okay. Given a food, how much of it was ordered across all 1,000 orders? Uh, okay, so we just got food and quantity. That's pretty easy. I'm just going to make this into a table, because that'll be easier. Uh, I'm going to name that table ORD for orders. I'll also make it easier. So then I just think I just want to say count ifs ORD uh, quantity by ORD uh, food is this. I definitely did enter two queue. I'm about to pick a fight with it, but no, I'm trying to do a count if when I need to do a sum if. So check, 151, we're good. Okay, given an order, what is the cost for that order? Okay, so we need to do our lookup here to pull in the prices. So uh, price, and that is going to be, not X lookup, index, food PR, food price, X match, this against uh, food, and X match, sorry, close bracket, and X match, this against dist. Uh, and then, I don't know, total quantity times price. So what is the question? Given a food, given an order number, sorry, what is the cost for that order? Okay, so that's just going to be index, ord, uh, total, I think, by this. 1950, yes. And just double check that order six does not have a quantity of one, because then it would be ambiguous, but it doesn't, so that's fine. Just wanted to make sure that I was looking for the total and not the individual item price. Okay, level five. Given a food, what is the total cost that was ordered across all? Okay, so that's fine. We're already set up for that, so we just want some ifs. Ord total by ord. Eh. Food 
is this. Uh, check, 1932. Yes, happy days. Okay. Level 6, given a student and a district, what was the total cost of all their orders in that district? Oh, interesting. I thought students just... Right, okay. For some reason, I was, I was thinking like a student lived in a certain district, but no, they go to different places, they buy food. That's fine. Uh, still not a problem. So we just want some ifs. Uh, ORD total, where ORD student, yes, is this, and ORD uh, district is this. That should be it. One, two, four, two, thirty-six. Yes. All right. Level seven. Given a student in a district, what would the total cost of all their orders have been if they all occurred in the given district? Hmm. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is, uh, I'm going to add a total for each district. So I'm going to add four more columns to the table with these four names. And for that, I'm just going to multiply this by this. Wait, what? No, sorry. By X lookup. Uh, by X lookup, uh, food in food. Uh, <laughs> you got to be quite careful here because this, with the square brackets, is the uh, structured reference to the column. And actually, sorry, I need the at to make it to the that row of the table, uh, and this is the named range over here. So probably should have used different names, but never mind. Uh, returning from here, and I'm just going to lock vertically, but not horizontally. So when I copy it across, it'll point to different columns. OK, so then now I can answer this one relatively easily, I think, which is to say some ifs uh, index Ord, and the row number is going to be zero for every row, and for the column I'm going to x match. So my totals by district are called tot and this, so tot and that against um, ord headers. Uh, so I'm summing that where ord student is this. I think that's it. So oh, three two three eight one zero yes hooray. Okay, uh, all right bonuses. Which food has the highest straight average cost for one quantity of the food across all four districts? Um, so, you, so you could come over here and say average and copy it down and blah blah blah, or if you're feeling fancy, you can say x look up. Uh, so if you x look up some really really big number. Um, then, and then say exact match or next smallest, it'll match against the highest. So I'm going to X look up, whatever, one and lots of zeros. Uh, the lookup array is going to be by row. So from the rows here, I'm going to take the average. And a little programming note, uh, up until pretty recently, if you were not on the Insider's Beta channel, you had to write, you know, lambda row average of row, use by row. Now you don't. Uh, this this short form has just become available in general release, and it is wonderful. It'll make you use Lambda helpers like Byro and Scan and Map so much more often, so please do. Uh, so that's going to give me the average for each row. Uh, the return array is going to be the food, and uh, we're going to say exact match or next smaller item. And that gives me that. Okay, which food has the most quantity ordered across all 1,000 orders? Um, I think we can do this fancy style as well. So we can say XLOOKUP. Uh, might need a bigger number here, let's say 10 to the 9, just to be safe. Uh, the lookup array is going to be some ifs of ORD quantity, where ORD food is food. Now that's a bit of a bit of a formula to wrap your head around, but this is... Uh, so here, some ifs looks at an array of numbers and an array of conditions and then matches it to these. But if you provide an array of arguments here, it spills an array of the same size and shape out. So this sum ifs uh, with the argument food is going to whatever, let's say there are 50 foods, it's going to give you one, 
one column by 50 rows, which is the total quantity for each of those foods. So then we can look up in that, the return array will be food, and again, exact match or next smaller item. What is the overall average cost per order? I think that's just going to be average of order total. Which student spent the most in the Highland District? So, yeah, well, so just at the same time that uh, that short forms in, in Lambda Helpers came out, uh, Group By also came out to general release. So let's use Group By to be vaguely educational. So I'm interested in the student that spent the most in the Highland District. So this is my student. I want to group those row fields. The values that I want is uh, total spend. Uh, and yes, there is there's an option for a filter array. So I, I could either just multiply the total spend by like district equals historic. Uh, and just I think that would work. Or I can use the native functions. But anyway, so whatever I'm doing, I'm then going to sum that. Uh, I don't want headers. I don't want any depth. Uh, sort order I do want. I want minus two. So I want to sort descending on the second columns. This is going to give me a list of students and a list of spend, and I want to sort descending. And then my filter array is going to be this equals historic. And no, I'm going to have to grab this and probably put it somewhere else because it'll spill. Oh, I'm sorry, not historic, but Highland. Oops. So I'll show you how to get just the bit that you want in a second, but uh, so this gives me the amount of money spent by each student in that district. The highest one is Amy Davidson. And if I have uh, a spilled array like this and I just want the first value from the top left, I can just put an at in front of it. And so I think that's my answer there. Which student spent the most in the Highland District? Yes. And then which student spent the most if all orders were in the historic district? So here again, I want to group by. Uh, the row fields are the students, uh, but now I'm going to use this column, which is the total price using historic district uh, prices. And again, I want to sum, no headers, no depth, sort order minus two. Uh, and again, I just want to put an at in front of that to take the first student from there. Whew, okay, so I'm <laughs> feeling good that I've made up some time because this kickoff case ended up taking me over half an hour, which is considerably more than its point value, but uh, I, I I always always like Peter's case, and maybe we're just like on the same wavelength or something. But I always, almost always, I find that I get through them pretty quickly as well. So that one went a lot more smoothly. Uh, I'm going to pause for a sec, just check if any of my answers are way off, and if they are, we might poke that for a second. But otherwise, I think we're good for today. Okay, looks like the answer is that my answers were good. So I will have one more video coming up on the data mix-up case. Um, well, I'm probably going to just sit and record it right now because I'm on a roll, but uh, it will be the next one I post at some point before terribly long. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.